Welcome to this special installment of Case in Point, produced by the University of Pennsylvania Law School. I'm your host, Steve Barnes. Today we'll be talking about the announcement by President Trump that the United States is moving its embassy in Tel Aviv, Israel, to Jerusalem. And with us to discuss this development is William Burke White. He's the Richard Perry Professor and Professor of Law here at the University of Pennsylvania, and he's the inaugural director of the Perry World House. Professor Burke White, thank you so much for joining us. President Trump has announced he will move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv in Israel to Jerusalem. If you'd explain to us, please, uh, what's the context for this and why now? So uh, what Trump will announce is that he is moving the recognition of the U.S., uh, the U.S. recognition of the Israeli capital from uh, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. The actual move of the embassy may take several years, and that will follow later on because you have to build a new embassy. But this is a a really critically important decision um, and fits into a broader context of the recognition of the state of Israel and and Middle East peace. Um, Essentially, the United States has recognized uh, Tel Aviv as the capital, even though we all know that the Israeli government sits in in Jerusalem. The U.S. has done this because the Palestinians also will recognize Jerusalem as the capital of any future Palestinian state. Uh, And the idea was to keep uh, this matter less complicated complicated by having not having two countries recognize the same city as their capital. Uh, and the U.S. has engaged in this fiction in part uh, to improve any future bargaining and negotiations between Israel and Palestine, uh, and in part to maintain a somewhat of a distance between uh, the U.S. policy and the on-the-ground uh, fighting that happens uh, in Jerusalem over who controls um, the key areas in that city, and this will now uh, complicate uh, that picture in significant ways. So in terms of direct relations between um, the Palestinian government, which is more complex than just saying the Palestinian government and Israel, and in the broader picture, both in the Mideast, uh, in terms of both Mideast peace and Israel's relationships with uh, Mideast governments, what does this mean from a diplomatic and security set of perspectives? Mm-hmm. So this is uh, a huge gift uh, to uh, the state of Israel. Uh, this is something that the Israelis have been uh, asking the United States to do for a long time, and their argument has essentially been, uh, it is clear that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Why do you recognize Tel Aviv? Uh, re- respect the reality on the ground and, and recognize um, Jerusalem. The uh, Palestinians uh, will respond uh, very um, seriously and significantly to this. They will see this as a gift to Israel and one that compromises their rights, both on the ground and also any future peace agreement. Uh, It has already created enormous diplomatic challenges for the United States. In the last uh, few days, uh, Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State, has essentially been snubbed by the EU foreign policy chief uh, in meetings in Europe yesterday. Uh, And basically every country... uh, from China to the Vatican has lodged a protest with the United States uh, for two reasons, essentially. One is that this decision uh, removes this issue from any future peace negotiation, and it was an issue that could create significant leverage and get concessions on other uh, other issues. Uh, and secondly, because there is a real risk that this will uh, lead to significant fighting um, on the ground. It could even be the spark that leads to the next intifada uh, in Israel. Um, it also has has broader diplomatic ramifications for the region. Uh, The Middle East region is under some turmoil at the moment uh, with Saudi Arabia, for example, going through a significant either anti-corruption cleanse or seizure of power um, by uh, by the new uh, soon-to-be leader there, uh, a uh, turbulence in Lebanon. Uh, This will complicate an already challenging diplomatic picture in the region uh, in ways that I don't think any of us can yet fully predict. Right. Follow-on question to that, do you still see uh, a Palestinian claim to East Jerusalem as a future uh, capital for a Palestinian state? So the Palestinians will absolutely continue to argue that East Jerusalem is and should be the capital of any Palestinian state. Um, Trump's announcement, uh, the wording was chosen carefully not to foreclose that option, but rather to recognize um, uh, Jerusalem as the Israeli capital. Uh, So there may still be some room there, and I think uh, the Palestinians are waiting to see exactly how the announcement is rolled out and how it's framed to to determine their reaction. but they will not forego uh, East Jerusalem as the future capital of of a Palestinian state. 
You mentioned um, foreign capital's reaction to Trump's announcement. But what in, in the international legal context, um, what does this mean? And can President Trump do this? What does it mean to formally declare a city like Jerusalem, as, especially such a contested city like Jerusalem as a foreign capital, in terms of international recognitions, treaties and regimes, and so forth? So only a country like the United States, you might say, would have the hubris to think that where it decides a capital is should matter to anyone. But in the context of uh, Israel and Middle East peace, uh, it is it has huge diplomatic and political ramifications. Uh, as an international legal matter, it's essentially irrelevant. Uh, when the United States recognized Israel back at the founding of the Israeli state, that was important because the international legal recognition of a country turns in part on whether other countries are willing to recognize it. And by being the first country to do so, um, that moved Israel towards statehood back at that point. Um, but where the capital is is really a diplomatic and political uh, question. Uh, but again, because the U.S. has always been um, part of uh, any peace process, uh, and this is one of the key negotiating elements, the U.S. recognition here matters um, politically, it matters diplomatically. Um, as a matter of domestic law in the United States, it matters because there is legislation on the books that the U.S. president president has to certify a reason for keeping the recognition of um, Tel Aviv as the capital uh, every six months. And uh, what Trump is doing today is saying, I am no longer under domestic law going to keep that certification in place, but I will issue a waiver until we can build a new embassy. So as U.S. law, it matters. Uh, international law, uh, this is really more a matter of diplomacy and politics. The next and last obvious question is, where do we go from here? In some ways, it's too early to tell. A lot will depend on the reactions of the Palestinians and, and the Arab world on the ground. Uh, the worst case scenario is we are in an intifada with violence uh, on the ground in uh, Israel and the Palestinian territories and broader turmoil in the region. Um, the uh, real other question will be, does where does this fit in the proposed peace plan that uh, Jared Kushner has been developing for President Trump? Uh, it may be that they have a grand strategy here, and this will all make more sense when that strategy rolls out. But what it certainly means is the United States has tipped its hand in favor of Israel and against the Palestinians in whatever the next phase of diplomacy is. And it's quite possible that that diplomacy on a Middle East peace won't be possible at all if the Palestinians follow through with some soft threats of breaking off all contact with the United States. Professor Bill Burke-White, this has been a great discussion and highly informative and gives us a lot to think about. Thanks so much for joining us on Case in Point. Thanks. Great to be with you. Case in Point. Great minds on law and life. Produced by the University of Pennsylvania Law School. Executive producer, Rebecca Anderson. Editor-in-chief, Stephen Barnes. And I'm Emily Brennan, assistant producer. Visit us on the web at caseinpoint.org and on Twitter at Case and Pointcast.